Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, and thanks so much for tuning in to Pods of the Multiverse Season 2. We're an unofficial Dungeons & Dragons podcast. We play 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Scala, and... I will be portraying the world of Ravnica. Almost forgot I was what I was going to say there. With me are my three dear friends, portraying the characters, navigating that world. My name is Jeppy, and I play Illipel, who has been a bar owner their whole life, but recently had a pretty tough time finding their way around one. <laughs> 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 True and real. True and real. I'm Jimmy. I play Clork, the Is It Engineer Goblin, and the world's foremost expert on sun disks. <laughs> now you are. You sure were before. Nah, I, I've read three whole books on the subject. Yeah, it would have been helpful before, but... Oh, you man. Know, what can you do? Yeah. And um, I'm Andy, and I play Alwyn, who just sometimes really can enable Illipel and doesn't like that about himself. That's buddy stuff. Friendships are complicated. I just, you know... <laughs> right. Friendships. In large air quotes, friendships. Yeah, friendships. <laughs> And speaking of enabling self-destructive tendencies, come, come help us. <laughs> <laughs> put Same our this century. <laughs> <laughs> come help us put our podcast further onto the internet airwaves by giving us engagement. <laughs> um, oh my god, I'm here for this. In any case, <sighs> we have an episode for you. I didn't study for this recap. Study. You were there. We were all there. We had downtime. (laughs) Welcome back, everyone. It's time for our weekly recap quiz show, where the game was last week, and the points might get you a d20 inspiration die. Not as catchy, but... There's the admission. I didn't use mine last time. No. Wait, is there carryover? Does that mean Jimmy gets to keep it, or is it a use it or lose it policy? It lasts until you use it. Oh, I'll just save them up. Wow. Oh, yeah. Mr. You know, fucking killing it at all these mini games. You need to save up your inspiration die. You know what? Bards don't need inspiration. I ain't playing. Buzz, we had downtime. <laughs> we had downtime. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, okay. Oh, you know what else is correct? We recorded it, if we're going to get that vague. <laughs> yeah. Hill Pell and Al when we buddied up. We did some buddy shit. Went on a high stakes investigation. All right, that's a point for Andy. At the wilted pedal. We scoped the joint. Jeppy, through a series of wild actions, may not have almost gotten Illipel and possibly Alwyn killed by trying to sneak into a back office. Slow down. Give everyone else a chance. You're like the kid in kindergarten that you get three seconds at the water fountain. You just took 20. Okay. Okay, Jeppy. Tell us what happened then. I got into the kitchen. Uh, Ilwin. Uh, Il- Ilwin. Ilwin. You know, that's what we call it when Illipel and Alwyn are together. It's Ilwin. <laughs> this is for the shippers out there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Where they merge together Dragon Ball Z style. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You gotta touch pointer fingers. Illipel went into the kitchen, found an eternal skeleton. Correct. One point for Jeppy. Making some soup or some shit. Illipel stole a bunch of documentation from the back office and then triggered a trap, did a great job. And then hid under, you know, like a prep station. I feel like I got like one or two more points there, and I feel like I should be generous and give someone else some room. So one, there was an eternal warrior. One of the blue guys was there. Generally, they're not just supposed to be around. Cooking soup. <laughs> <laughs> this establishment, owned by Anel Gast, Illipel's former mm, boss and now rival, Yep. which later in this same game that we're recapping... Almost killed Illipel in their own establishment for stealing said documents. Correct. Points. And that's what we got up to. <laughs> it goes further back than that. Clork went to the library. There we go. Let's hear about Clork. <laughs> Clork learned some very important information about the sun disc, which is actually called the immortal sun. But Clork already knew that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clork knew all of that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Clork had a meeting with Ral Zarek, who further expounded upon what exactly the immortal sun does it's an etheric lock an etheric lock correct stops planeswalkers from planeswalking you could switch planeswalking on and off with it correct also ralz eric's a planeswalker major spoilers for the mtg universe i'm sure (laughs) ah yes he's been printed on like four planeswalker cards (laughs) yeah if you've never been on the mtg wiki no one knew yeah 
Just Google Ral Zarek. Clerk should have started there. <laughs> uh, I feel like Clerk did. So- oh, uh, Ral Zarek also gave Clerk a key rune with which to summon a weird. Also, for what it's worth, Alwyn went and visited Lana with some questions about the Dimir and the Eternal Warriors, and she just ended up saying some really nice things about his mother. And then the we ended by meeting back up with Tomic, and he had us put on nicer clothing. He had you get fitted for nicer clothing. Because... Because we're going on a spy mission. We're going to the auction, baby. Yeah, basically. For secret, nefarious, underbelly goods and services. The auction called for all the points? The exchange. Okay, Jeffy. There you go. You get tonight's inspiration die. I was getting there. I had it written down, too. We're going to meet at Vuliev's Mausoleum. Vuliev's Mausoleum. Correct. All right. Give it to Jeppy. Yeah, I'll give it to Jeppy. He hasn't gotten it yet. He got it the first time! No, he did not. He did no such thing. This shit is earned. He won and didn't get the die. Yeah, this was before. This was when the points didn't matter. That's right. This was back when the points didn't matter. Right. Alessander took your measurements, told you the... Outfits should be ready tomorrow by five, and you can pick them up, and then the exchange is going to be at Vuliev's mausoleum. Also in the first precinct, Alec told you to arrive at eight. So you're free to do what you like between now and then, or we can just flash forward in time. Yeah, I'm good. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A day passes, and in the evening you return to Alessander's exquisite attire, this fine tailor's shop. And you see, waiting for you, three neat piles of folded clothes with a mask sitting on top of each one, a wolf, a fox, and a... God damn it, what did Clark go masked as? I'm looking through my notes and I can't seem to find it. I think we set it on Phoenix. Phoenix, yes, a Phoenix. We did, yeah. Um, so you see these... Piles of clothes and these masks sitting on top, and Alessandra will say, There's a changing room in back if you would like to uh, get changed. <laughs> Thank you for being so accommodating. I'll just change right here. And Clark starts taking his clothes off. I go into the changing room. <laughs> I also want to try as best as I can to conceal the gavel on my person while I'm changing. All right, roll me sleight of hand. Sort of maybe kind of stick it in my back, like, belt loop under my jacket. And while I'm doing this, I will go ahead and cast Enhance Ability on Dex to do this. Okay. Good thing I did that. One of those was the three, and that's a 17 total. You think it's pretty well tucked away back there? What about you, Olapelum? Going to try and sneak something in? Or maybe just your words are your best weapon? Oftentimes they do not fail me. But that's worth a try. I'm going to go ahead and try to conceal my weapon as well. All right. Same thing. Roll sleight of hand. So 14 on the dice and... Okay, 19. Uh, And this is the rapier you're trying to conceal? Or a dagger or something like that? Le rapier. Le rapier. You you conceal your thin blade sort of beneath the folds. On a 17, Andy got... uh, You think you tucked it in. On a 19, I definitely tucked so I don't know. I think the say that I think it was like an eighteen yeah, to definitely okay. tuck and a seventeen to maybe tuck. So the thing is, the scowl is going to roll for the NPCs when it happens. The guard is going <laughs> to roll perception good... when you go to the place. Come on, fledgling DM, get with the program. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anything you're doing in the few hours between picking up your outfits and going to the party? We walk in there. It is very walkable. Same precinct. I look at Clark. <laughs> Like, look, I think that's a bigger top hat than what they said they would give you. The bigger, the better. And I give him one of the healing potions, kind of gesturing as if maybe you could fit this underneath it. (laughs) Oh, oh, in the hat? All right. Clark pours the potion into the hat. It gets bigger. (laughs) (laughs) Should I roll sleight of hand for that? Sleight of hand for your potion. Are 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 you legitimately trying to do this? Put a healing potion in my hat? Yeah. I mean... If Alan thinks it's a good idea. You don't have to. No, I don't think it's a bad idea. Might as well do it. Sure. Roll me. Yeah, sleight of hand (laughs) is fine. (laughs) We're going to net A flat roll? Flat roll? He's just putting it under a hat. How hard is that? I mean, how hard is balancing a vial on top of your head? Inside a hat? He should be making a sleight of hand check with every step he makes. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta be something for being a goblin. This is why I was like, are you actually doing this? So I put the healing potion inside the hat, 
and the hat is now very obviously shaped like a healing potion. <laughs> Because I rolled a one. <laughs> Never mind, Clark. And I just take the healing potion back. I mean, if you rolled a one, I would be able to tell. It was a nice thought anyway. Yeah, you would know this. You know, this is just common sense. They will probably take weapons, but potions and things are not necessarily going to be confiscated. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, I give Clark the healing potion anyways. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. We Guess so. That. We're just breezing through this session. Guess so. <laughs> All right. 20 minutes of us dressing ourselves. <laughs> so, a couple of hours pass. The appointed time arrives. The full moon is high in the sky, and you make your way across the first precinct lit not only by the moonlight, but also by fine lanterns on the streets. Or you make your way to Vuliev's mausoleum. Illipel, you would have known of this place. This is a somewhat renowned venue to the Orzhov. Uh, Vuliev was one of the members of the Ghost Council before they were exorcised by your current guildmaster, and his family's name still holds a great deal of influence, even though the patron of that family is no more. Mm -hmm. You arrive at this ornate crypt, and there are a pair of gold-armored knights standing at the door. They have horned helms with no visible eye sockets. They do stop you as you approach. Invitation, please. Did one of you have the invitation? Isn't Tomic still with us? Uh, Tomic hasn't spent the entire day with you. I he thought we you to meet met him there. And like we, we've all been walking. So no, he wasn't. He wasn't at the tailor shop when you went to pick up your clothes. Oh, he's going to meet you here. Then I guess we just wait. <laughs> Can wait until he shows up. Ah, my friends, it is good to see you. He's dressed in very formal advocate's robe. He has lost the scroll cases he usually carries with him, and he's wearing a gold mask that suggests the face of an owl. As he comes up to you, you clean up nicely, shall we? After you. Sure. All right. He presents his invitation to the guard, and the guard nods, allows him to pass, takes a look at you all, and waves you onward, and you descend into this crypt. You are led by Tomic into this subterranean ballroom, a large chamber bathed in the warm orange glow of torchlight, a number of small pedestals holding various objects in glass display cases ring the edges of this room. There are a number of well-dressed guests in gilded masks milling about and exchanging whispered conversations, and at the far end of the chamber is a raised altar and a pulpit with a pair of knights in gold armor and horned helms guarding it. They have flails at their sides, and Tomek sort of whispers something to a, a gentleman at the door. They speak to the room. On behalf of Lady Tessa Karlov, Tomek Vrona, and guests. Is there, like, gentle hand-pat clapping? Yes, there's a smattering of light applause. Illipel, you would also recognize immediately the name of... Tessa Karlov. The Karlov name is one of the other families associated with the Ghost Council. And again, while the Ghost Council itself is gone, they remain strongly influential in the guild. You are ushered inside. The night is yours to do what you see fit with. I will sort of explain to you the rules of this influence game. There's going to be a certain amount of time during the party that you can do things, a number of rounds. During each round, you can each take an action. You can attempt to influence someone. You can attempt to gather information on a person to figure out how they might be influenced. Or you can perform and try and make yourself seem impressive. If you succeed at doing that, you can gain advantage on a future influence attempt. One more time. It's like a skill challenge. Yeah, it's similar to a skill challenge. Will we be rolling these skills? Yes. Tomic will explain to you the sort of catch of this influence game, which is everyone here is very used to hearing honeyed words and flattery. So that technique will only go so far. To really make an impression on someone, you need to understand what their specific interests are 
and speak to those. Basically, the DC for persuasion checks is higher than if you are talking on a subject that the person has a specific interest in, the person you're trying to influence. Mm -hmm. So you can learn what someone's interested in by observing them and then have a better chance to influence them if you know. Got it. Is there food here? There is. You see these little homunculus servants, these dwarfish, gangly creatures with sorrowful masks fused to their faces, wandering around with little platters of hors d'oeuvres and crudités. Ew. What do they got? They've got standard fancy party stuff, caviar, and little quiches. <laughs> no hot dogs. No, no, no hot dogs. Ah, skewered escargot in a pear parsnip reduction. Yes, absolutely pretentious. Alan uh, just kind of sours his face under his mask. And, and IRL, uh, I made I made gnocchi with seared parsnips and caramelized pear in a bechamel last night. So ooh. no escargot though. So Mac. Would you mind directing me towards some of the people of particular interest at tonight's soiree? Ah, certainly. He will point out a woman in a serpent's mask. There is Lady Anatevna Vuliev. She is the host of this gathering and a scion of the Ghost Council. A very influential person. She likely knows much of what goes on at these exchanges. Surely Lady Vuliev is not the only person of interest here? Oh, certainly not. See there. And he points out a, an angel, raven-winged angel, which marks those who have abandoned the path of Razia. She's masked as a goat. That is Prior Emilio. She trains individuals in the ways of the sons. A somewhat forgotten discipline of martial and intellectual practice among the Orzhov. And there are others, if you wish to ask. Let's put it this way. Assume I wish to ask, until I make my approach on one of the guests. Very good. There is the renowned chef Bezel Gurch here. You have Bezel Gurch at this party? <laughs> what a name. I did not know you were a enthusiast of the culinary arts, Master Clark. I eat all kinds of food. <laughs> I have all his books. Well, Bezel is known for cooking with exotic ingredients. I expect he is here to bid on some tonight. Ooh, I want to talk to him. Okay, cool. So Tomek pointed him out? Yeah, Tomek pointed him out. All right, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Unless Illipel, you want, you were working up to a particular thing there that I interrupted. Go for it. Let's let's get into one of these. All right, all right, all right. This is being fun. I like this more. All right. We're right behind you, Cloak. Don't stay too close behind me. I want to make a good impression. I kind of uh, brush the crumbs off my front and straighten my huge hat and make my approach. All right. He's sort of a bulbous guy. His mask is that of a ceratop, a rhino-like creature with more of an elk's horn coming out of its nose. How do you approach him? Is that... Is that Bezel Gurch? Ah, oh, another fan. Hello there, little fellow. Hello. <laughs> my friend is a little starstruck. I believe we all are. It is, however, great to be in your company. You are quite a learned chef. You know, I pictured you differently. Really? That was a joke. How is it that you pictured me? I thought you had more of like a... Did Clark in character say that was a joke? Yes. Because <laughs> he just walked up to the celebrity chef with a rhino face. <laughs> That's so good. I didn't realize it. <laughs> we have masks on. Jeffy, what do you think we've been describing the whole session? No, no, no. I, I, I wrote down everyone's masks when Scala was going into it. I just forgot that when when Clark made his joke. There's something you'd like to talk about, little fellow. Yeah. The food at this party is, uh... I mean, he's wearing a mask, but I kind of look at his <laughs> face to see what he thinks of it before saying the rest of that. Oh, you needn't say anything, my little friend. Uninspired when you're Basil Gurch. Everything is uninspired. Exactly what I was thinking. Well, anyway, I kind of look at Illipel like, what are we supposed to ask him? I would say, however, that the escargot with the peach pasta production is quite good. It stirs warm memories for me, and Basil, I'm sure you're familiar with the psychological rewards behind eating foods and triggering memories. It's one that the best chefs can capture 
without even knowing their patrons. Indeed, indeed, my new foxy friend. It's a food memory that to this day you can't quite capture. I have fond memories of my aunts and uncles making a particular fig jam toast that to this day, despite it being three ingredients, I simply cannot recapture in my kitchen. Ah, uh, I prefer not to look to the old, but be a pioneer. My search for strange ingredients is what drives me forward as a chef, to experience things that no other chef has ever done before. Ah, I can certainly tip my hat, ah, sorry, my mask to innovation. Any items in particular you're eyeing for this evening? Oh, well... I wouldn't really say you're not hoping to drive a bidding war for them, are you? Oh, we would do nothing of the sort. Again, I can't even cook fig toast. I would hate to bastardize your lovely ingredients. Roll me persuasion or deception. 19, as is the minimum that I can roll for those. Okay. And I'm going to go with persuasion, if the flavor there matters. He sort of looks at you, looks around. I don't know about that, my friend. We've only just met... And you have the look of a sly individual about you. Uh, I think you might be trying to trick me into revealing what my latest recipe might be. Ah, I shouldn't have chosen the fox as my outfit for this evening. They are rather sly creatures. <laughs> not to worry, not to worry. You seem a friendly fellow, but a good chef can never be too careful with their recipes. Indeed. That is fair. How about this? If you find yourself in need of assistance during the bidding, no reason the three of us can't help drive up the cost away from some pesky competitors. Let us know if we can be of assistance. And if you change your mind, we'll be milling about. All right. Fucking failed on a 19. This is great. I did tell you that normal social checks would be a higher DC. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Gurch. I just met this one tonight. Don't pay them any mind. Have a good night. Good night, my little friend. The entire time they were talking to this guy, I'm kind of just hanging back with Tomek. The chef a spy. Otherwise, I think they're just wasting their time. You can know more about a person. You can roll investigation, insight, or perception to try and learn some more during the course of one of these rounds about somebody. Okay. So far, from what Tomek has been describing, I think Alwyn is not really convinced one way or the other on really anyone's actual identities or jobs. You know, they could be who they say they are, but in this sort of thing, you can always be working, you know, more than one angle. It's true. So I guess I'm going to roll insight while I'm listening to this entire exchange from across the room. All right, go ahead and roll insight. Cool. Dirty 20. All right, so as you're listening to this, you note how much Basil likes talking about food and exotic ingredients, and you feel like with a good nature or animal handling check, you might be able to influence him and get some more out of him. All right, interesting thought. I think I'm going to sort of keep it to myself for now. And Clark, any additional action you'd like to take during this round? Not other than just saying to Illipel, I was just a fan of that guy. I don't think he'd have any reason to know about the uh, sun disk. That's it. So, the party continues on. You mingle a bit. After a moment, Illipel, someone taps you on the shoulder. Pel, I think I would have recognized that lilting droll anywhere. And you recognize this voice as the representative friend of yours, Representative Algath. What brings you to a soiree like this? Ah, Algath. It's been quite some time. It's great to see you. Though I guess I've been so busy, I can't believe I didn't think of the possibility of running into you. Where there is money, you surely follow. A trait I value in you most dearly. Well, these campaigns don't finance themselves. How are you, pal? What have you been up to? I've been on some rather interesting work. Plenty to do with the Orzhov. Been in a few other errands as well. Met some new friends across various guilds. Here, however, I'm here for a personal matter. Having to do with our good friend Arnel Gast, I'm sure you recall. Yes, I remember her. I'm afraid we have reason to believe she may have stolen a valuable item. We're here to see if it may or may not be present in these quarters. Have you done an audit of the inventory today? Well, not quite. I'm actually here selling. Of course you are. Algath, my favorite. You never disappoint me. What are you here to sell? Do you mean the actual trinket or what I'm here to sell? 
Well, you know how this works. Indeed I do. Which means there's no reason to be coy with me, good friend. Then I'm selling my vote. Several of them, perhaps, on influential matters yet to be decided. How deliciously vague. Well, the influential matters are yet to be decided. My good friend, I believe the truth lies somewhere in the middle of those words. But I understand. I have given you just as much truth plenty of times. And so you understand why I might be being guarded, pal? Certainly. What about the trinkets? The one you're looking for, or the one I'm selling? Oh, the one you're selling, of course. Ah, he sort of adjusts his mask, it has the appearance of an eagle, he lowers his voice a bit. I'm selling a machine designed for the purpose of surveillance. Ah, well I could see a bevy of buyers show interest in that. Anyone you're hoping to curry favor with, with such an extravagant item? Well, I'm obviously hoping to receive the favor of Lady Anna Tevna, but there are several other influential pontiffs and advocates at this gathering. Your own patron that you arrived with has the ear of Lady Karlov. Anyone who might be willing to take part in the business of favors. Well, good friend, if you had had such an interest in currying favor with the members of the Orzhov, should have come to me sooner. While I may not know these individuals as closely as I may know others... Certainly I may be of use to you, going through all the hubbub of selling such valuable items to curry favor. Huh. Ah, I apologize, I'm speaking out of turn. Pell, you're very sweet, but the kind of Xenos the Rose brings in are not sufficient for my needs. Tomek, are there any more individuals on your list? Certainly. That dragon-masked figure over there in the blue robes, I do not know their surname, but they are called Silas, a powerful precognitive mage in service of the Azorius. There is also... Precognitive? Like, precognitive? Like, for real? Like... Like seeing the future, to predict potential criminal activities. Yeah, but, like, what's his record like? You know, is he right, usually? Or is he making it up? I'm not at liberty to comment on such things, especially as a legal professional. (laughs) (laughs) What a fucking lawyer's answer. Good thing we have a legal professional here to tell us what we can and can't say. Now, there's also something of a successful jeweler I saw around by the name of Faramil Tibich. They are a frequent guest at these sorts of events. They might have seen something. Frequent guest. That's promising. A jeweler probably knows something about shiny objects. What do you say, Alwyn? Illipel looks distracted enough. All right, let's give it a try. Yeah, we'll go ahead and approach Tibich. Sure. Oh, uh, hello. Good evening. You see a elf-looking person, masked as a spider. Uh, hello, are you interested in some of my pieces? Are you selling this evening? Oh, yes. Very fine jewelry of all varieties. Well... Accessories to dazzle the eyes and inspire the awe of those who look upon you. We could use some inspiration. Maybe you could. I think I'm already inspiring enough <laughs> awe. <laughs> wow, way to just fucking throw me under the bus. You have uh, taken some pains to make your outfit rather dazzling, uh, my phoenix friend. Thanks for noticing. I'm pretty proud of this number. Your professional opinion. What do you think of his outfit? I mean, uh, in my line of work, I like to think that a few accessories around the digits or the neck are probably the best way to subtly exude extravagance, but I think the sheen on your cravat is somewhat innovative. Why, thank you. I was uh, feeling a little self-conscious, actually, so thanks. Tell us, do you have any magical pieces this evening? Nothing I've made has been taken to an enchanter yet, but I do find enchanter's work very fascinating. I'm sure you do. Mm. Do you ever sell enchanted items? Enchanted rings, or, you know, necklaces, or, you know, just anything of the shiny variety that might be enchanted in some way? Yes. Rather frequently. What's the most powerful thing that you have ever sold? Just fucking going for it. I love it. Roll me... I'm going to say roll Arcana here. All right. Ten. Okay. As Clark does this, can I cast, like, dancing lights off of his fucking mirror suit to make him look, like, particularly magical and majestic? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. He's trying to get me advantage. (laughs) Yeah, and I'll, I'll treat that as a help... So you can roll this with advantage. All right. Nice. It's a 10. God damn it, Jimmy. (laughs) This seems important. I'm going to use my uh, 
inspiration die. Fingers crossed, everyone. Ah, now it's an 18. All right. You start talking shop with Varamil about enchanted rings. and I'm kind of a gearhead. Alwyn has made you appear more striking with the application of this simple cantrip. And you get into it and you feel like they warm up to you a bit. And you feel like this line of discussion has made them a little more friendly towards you. And you feel like you've gained a point of influence with them. Nice. And they will tell you about some magical pieces that they've created. A nose ring for a giant once that they're particularly proud of. Wow. Must have been big. The casting took many attempts. All right, I want to size this person up one more time and kind of see if I think there's anything else I can get out of them right now or if I should move on. Yeah, roll me insight or investigation. Okay. Oh my god. Five. Again, they seem to have enjoyed your little chat. Can I do it too? Yeah, sure. (laughs) 24. Again, they seem to have enjoyed your little chat. But time to time, they remark on how they're feeling anxious that they hope their things sell this evening. Mm. They've sized you up. They don't think that you're going to be able to buy them, but you think if you could convince somebody maybe to to buy one of their pieces, you feel like their disposition towards you would be even better. Okay. Can I keep... I feel like we're turning Clork into a real spectacle here. Can I keep the dancing lights kind of disco balling off of Clork? Yeah, sure. Cool. What's disco? I don't know, but I get the feeling that this sort of place enjoys a spectacle like this. Maybe. I want to look around the room. Are there any other goblins here? Roll perception. All right, it's not the dice. It's just me. That is a four. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Every <laughs> roll so far is with a different detail. Oh, you don't see any other goblins here. You don't. You don't see any goblins here. Everyone is a goblin. You just don't notice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, that was a pretty low roll. You see goblins everywhere. You go tap on a thrall's shoulder, thinking it's a goblin. <laughs> thrusts a plate of quiches in your face. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry I asked. <laughs> Can I look for any gorgons? Yeah, sure. 15. Roll some percentile dice. No, you don't see any gorgons here. Okay. I know where I want to pick things back up with Algath. Yeah, sure. Um, they had mentioned that Violet Rose wouldn't give them the money. Well, to be clear, I was not offering a lump sum of cash to help you. Though I do assume these days, bankrolling with counterfeit money is no longer an option to you. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. (laughs) Ah, it almost hurts me to hear you say that. It is, after all, where our friendship began. That being said, I do think I can be of some assistance to you. But, how about this? And I'm sure you can see this coming from a mile away, but an even trade. I will introduce to you someone from Orzhov... And perhaps you can introduce me to someone of influence in the Azorius Senate. That is certainly achievable. And equitable. And equitable. Is there a particular person you have in mind? There is somewhat of a reputable arrester here tonight monitoring the event. I suppose an arrester will suffice. If there are any precognitive mages, however, I would be most appreciative. Ah, I think I know just the person. There's something of an egghead. They are very committed to the craft of magic, and speaking to them of the mystical arts or the history of the Azorius Senate will probably gain you some points in their book. I do appreciate that. That person wearing the mask of a dragon, their name is Silas. I will return the favor as soon as I am done. However, that individual over there is Anatevia Vuliev. She's interested in... And then Illipel will conjure some bullshit. Mm. She's interested in this exchange in particular. But if you're looking for something a little more specific, she takes a liking to antiques and trinkets. Unless you happen to write that down about her, do you want me to roll deception? Roll deception. <laughs> okay. I was like, how funny would it be if that was in Scala's character notes? It's like, well, shit. <laughs> that is a 21. Algath nods at you as he brings you over to Silas, a human in a blue robe, dragon mask on their face. Algath, who is your new friend? My name is Illipel. Ah, Illipel. Good to meet you. You as well. It's great to meet you. Yes, uh, very good. Actually, I 
I foresaw this meeting, though the details of it are fuzzy to me now. That's the problem with divination. It shows many possible outcomes, some of which are yet to be determined. Funny how that is. Of course you saw it. Of course you did. I did not expect this character to speak like this, and I don't like the way that Illipel chose to modulate. <laughs> I wish I had heard a little more. You didn't have to do that! Oh, it's it's okay. <laughs> I love way the character just told me that it's okay. <laughs> Thank you for reassuring me, Silas. I appreciate it. I'm that. trying to stay in voice. This is a weird voice. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Okay. I've made a choice for this character. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I suppose you foresaw it because not only are you skilled, but you foresaw making a new friend. I heard you the one to go to with questions about the history of Azorius. Ah, uh, yes, yes. An ancient and storied history it is. A proud tradition of, you know, maintaining the law, keeping order, preventing things from getting out of hand. That's my job. Valuable work indeed. I wonder more because I take a particular interest in Isperia. Ah, uh, yes. Tragedy what happened to her. She was a truly inspired leader. I couldn't agree more. A paragon of defense for the righteous. That's why I take a liking to her. I am but a humble bar owner, but I still see myself as a last bastion for the people that society has forgotten. A mission that, though I don't serve in the Azorius, I think Esperia would have wanted to see carry out, and I contributed to it in my own humble ways. Always keen to learn more about her. Okay, if this is the line you're going, how about you roll history? Look, Illipel's talking to that dragon face over there. I can't hear what they're saying, but I just know they're lying every other word of their mouth. Lying can be useful. <laughs> uh, it's a 24. 24? Yeah. You feel like your interest in the history of the Azorius and of its most recent Parun, excuse me, second most recent Parun, petrified only a few months ago, has warmed Silas to you, and you feel like you've gained a point of influence with that. Awesome. Riveting conversation, Illipel. Always good to meet another person who cares about our legacy. Clark, Alwyn, uh, are you going to try and influence anybody else? Alwyn is beginning to feel just really uneasy and kind of out of place. Yeah, naturally. And just all of these words and and double meanings to every conversation and every sentence. And I think for this round, he's just kind of going to hang back. And I just want to look around the room and stick to what he's comfortable doing. He wants to try and get a read on just whoever looks like they're doing the most handshaking, the most talking, whether that's Anatevna or somebody else. Sure. Roll me investigation, insider perception. Okay. You see Illipel. <sighs> I mean... <laughs> I'm kind of afraid of that answer, but yeah, I'm just kind of going to sit back and survey everything. Okay, 25. We'll call that perception. Okay, so while a lot of people are coming up and paying homage to Lady Anatevna, her conversations usually seem pretty curt and formal. Hmm, okay. You see, however, a couple of people, one sort of masked as an eagle, Illipel might be able to tell you is Algath, Silas, and a third figure masked as a lion. Uh, they look to be Vidalkin by their blue skin, talking to a wider variety of people. And you also see Varamil talking to different people, trying to drum up interest for their pieces. I point the previous out to Tomek. The one in the lion mask, what's their business? I do not know. I think they are in a restaurant, but that is just by their robe. You see, sort of a formal blue robe with some gold accent and several symbols of office on it. Do they have a particularly large amount of jewelry or just accents? No. No accessories. They're very... You said they're Vidalkin, so that's kind of par for the course. They're a little Spockish. Is Illipel done with Silas? For this round. I don't want to go over it. Villapel's still over there. And then Eagle Mask was, you said Elgath? Yeah, that's Elgath. Illipel already talked to that person? That's one of the people Illipel knows. Yeah. Right, 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 okay. But I don't think that we know that because Illipel hasn't told us. Right. You also wouldn't know that I lied to him about why I was there, so go ahead and blow up my spot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything. 
All right, I'm going to go talk to Lion Face. Okay, what do you say? Can you describe what they look like? Tall, even for a Vidalcan. It's hard to tell age because they're, you know, one of these races that lives for a few centuries. But you'd guess like middle-aged, standing up very straight as they sort of make their way around the room with a purposeful gait, blue robe, gold trim. I'm just going to walk right up when they're not otherwise engaged. Nice mask. Thank you. What? I said thank you. For the compliment. Yeah, of course. Just striking up conversation. I hardly know anyone here. Hmm. I can say the same. It is distinctly uncomfortable. I agree. Do you come to these kind of things very often? I try to avoid it if I can. Hmm. Avoid it. And yet, you're here. I have been instructed to maintain a watchful eye on these proceedings. To make sure everything is being done according to the law. Oh. So you're getting paid to be here. As... I would suspect, are you? I'm not at liberty to say. Allow me to make a deduction. You are the Guild Pact agents. There's Guild Pact agents at this party? (laughs) Roll deception. (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ. Oh no. (laughs) Ten. You need not be coy with me, little friend. Oh, needn't I? No. In fact, your presence here is of some interest to me. To you personally, or to the royal me? I believe this conversation has gone on long enough. Good day. No, wait, wait, wait. I still had some questions for you. (sighs) What questions would you have of me? Well, I mean, we have so much to talk about now that you told me that you are interested in just the fact that I'm here. What do you know about me? What I know about you is that you irritate me, and I should like to cease conversing with you as soon as is convenient. I'd like to cease conversing with you, too, but we got business to do here. Think I'm talking to you because I like you? This ought to work. (laughs) (laughs) Roll offend. Very well. Let me put it very simply. I believe your little inquiry may be upsetting to the orderly proceeding of things. And of the many causes I have for concern among these socialites, I think you and your endeavor are suspect. And I shall continue to treat it as suspect until I am satisfied that it is not the case. Can I hear this conversation? You've been walking around the room trying to keep a general eye on everything. You can walk in on this conversation. I don't walk directly towards this individual. I sort of back up behind them so I don't really face them. I assure you, if you know the guild pact is here, you know they are the least suspicious in this entire room. Now why don't you go ahead? And answer my friend a little more truthfully. Why are you here? Roll intimidation. A flat 18. Okay. I will say as much as I have said. I am here to make sure that order is maintained. And while the Guild Pact interprets the laws that we in the Senate create, their interpretation does not always lead to the maintenance of order. That's a little presumptuous. <laughs> Listen, buddy, that's all above my pay grade. How much do you know about me and why I'm here? I know there are agents of the Guild Pact searching for something. Something. And that their search may cause a disturbance, and that I am to maintain eyes on you. So you've been watching us, then? Among other things, as I said, you are not my only concern at this event. There are many who would seek to subvert law and order at this gathering. Well, then... We're on the same side. That remains to be seen. Well, consider it a gesture of allegiance, then, what I'm about to tell you. Alan sort of pauses to try and think of how Illipel would speak in this situation. (laughs) Aww. We have an unfull confidence of an investigation that Dimir agents were involved in the theft of an incredibly powerful, high-profile artifact. And as I mentioned before, we are not your enemy in this purpose. So tell us, who else are you watching? And we won't get in your way. And we won't cause a disturbance, neither. Roll persuasion. These are all flat rolls. <laughs> That's an 11. Your good speech aside, you can still see him frowning beneath his lion's mask. You may say we are on the same side, but my long years as an arrester have taught me to trust no one, and... I am not about to explain to someone that I do not trust any more than I already have. Alan sort of drops a little bit of his sort of half-cocked cover and just says, Believe me when I tell you, 
I can relate to that notion. Good evening, Guild Pact agents. He wanders off. All right, forget this guy. Let's go cause a disturbance. What do you have in mind, Master Cloak? Well, I was just going to do it, but now I'll tell you. I'm just going to ask anybody if they've seen the sun disk. <laughs> sure. Let's go first to Illipel with Silas. Yeah, before we blow this shit up, let's go ahead and see if one of the party can cobble together a natural victory in this game that we're playing. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised. Usually it's Jeppy that's subverting all intent of the DM here, so... Let's try to switch it up, you know? I I, I won today's inspiration die around. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's time to think new things are happening. That's all. I'll say it has been a pleasure speaking with you today so far, but I wanted to pick your brain on another subject, if I may. You've been so fascinating to talk to. And you too, my new friend. Go ahead. Please, please. This is great. A lot of people I speak to are really interested in the Liev column of the Azoria Senate, but I I get grief for this all the time, but I have a particular liking for the Jelen column. I just find it so interesting how laws get written and debated over before they become enacted. As a business owner, I do have to keep in touch with these things. You know, that makes complete sense to me, seeing as your friend over there is a legislator. I should have guessed. I think it's interesting what's happened, right? See, Dovin comes in. And he's aligned with the Procrocus party, right? And he turns out to be in league with all those invaders. So now the Procrocus party is split. There's those continuing to toe the line, and there's this splinter group in the Paracujus, and they're looking like they could win some real big elections this year. I presume Silas is going to keep going. Yeah. At some point, I will stop Silas and just say, I think what's best of all, though, what thing really fascinates me is that despite all this chaos and tumultuous nature of what's gone on is that the senate itself can kind of rein things in and still pass and enact laws that are just and favorable to the whole of ravnica really speaks volumes to your abilities what's great is that it gives me hope that we can rein in some of the more ill tidings of other guilds it's not to speak of masters of subterfuge and surveillance like in the Demir. Oh yes, you know, we have our disagreements from time to time, but we in the Azorius and in the Orja, we have a sort of bond, you know, we both believe in order. Order is what's important, and we keep things orderly and no one appreciates it. Roll me history, or I'm gonna say insight is also acceptable. We're gonna go with history. (laughs) Okay, 24. You feel like you've gotten another point of influence with Silas here. Ba, 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 Silas points. Okay. At least somebody's doing something here. Did you say at least someone's doing something here? Seriously? <laughs> Leave it to the wordsmith. And you told me I shouldn't modulate my voice, damn it. That's what's working. That's doing all the magic. The party continues. People are going around to these various pedestals, writing bids next to the items on display. Some larger items are being brought up to the stage area at the far end and being presented to be bid on. Any items that would sort of catch our eye, or at least mine, is a scavenger? You see some old statues and sculptures. You can't place it exactly, but you can recognize the artistic style from the buried pasts that you're familiar with rummaging through in the Undercity. You see strange magical items, peculiar contraptions. Algat's item comes up for bid. It's this flying mechanical drone creature that hovers around. But the party continues, and you feel like you have perhaps one or two more opportunities to influence people before the night wraps up. Have I been able to get any read on Anatevna at all over the course of the night? Roll me insight or perception. It's only made a 12 on either. It's hard to tell exactly, but she seems extremely formal. All of her interactions have this ritualistic bent to them. I find Illipel. Illipel, I need you to do something for me and I need you to ask no questions about it. I am in the middle of something, but I can promise I won't ask questions what you need. I need one of your perfumes. I thought you'd never ask, and guess what? You do not have to ask again. (laughs) <laughs> Always happy to share. And I will quickly, you know, just pass it as if I'm seeing a buddy and be like, ah, oh, friend, here you go. And then quickly turn back to Silas. But I just want to keep Silas engaged. All very good. Okay. I take this perfume. I spray some on myself and I go over to Lady Anadipna. Okay. I sort of approach and bow in a modest way. 
Good evening, m'lady. Sol auro benedicte, sol negro benedicte. Good evening, my honored guest. I have brought the lady of this fine house a gift, not for auction, but for you personally. And I sort of almost don't even want to, but I say, on behalf of the office of the Guild Pact, this is for you. And you hand her the perfume? Yeah. She accepts it. She looks at it. She gives it to one of her thrall servants holding her train up. Mm-hmm. And it, like, stuffs it into its fleshy body. Your gift is accepted in the faith that it was offered. Thank you. Tell me, have you been having a busy night here? Or the parading? Or the words? Or the ceremony? It's somewhat uncouth of you to be so forward, my guess. I mean no disrespect at all. But above respect, where I'm from, I hold trust for much I regard. And I understand as someone who runs such a fine house as this, that breaking the trust of another would come at a very high price. Trust is indeed a valuable commodity. I presume there is a point that you are getting to. I'm not going to walk around here and pretend that you don't know who we are, what we're doing. I want to roll insight. Sure, roll insight. 23. Okay, yeah. When you say this to her, she knows who you are. How much she knows about what you're doing is unclear, but there's definitely a recognition when you say that. Okay. We haven't come here looking to change your status quo, milady. Rest assured, your operations and those of everyone in here can carry on as they have been going. The exception of one, one that the Guild Pact knows has committed not a crime against it, but a crime against all of Ravnica. Do you know who the person in question is? That's a very lofty accusation. Are there a lot of people around us right now? At this stage of the party, I would say no. A lot of people, as soon as they came in, the first person they came to see was Lady Vuliev, but sure. now it's quieted down. Yeah. I'm not one to spin rumor, shape lie. I don't have a silver tongue, and I wasn't born with a silver spoon. We know what the object in question was, and we know it came through here. We're looking for who bought it, and we'll be on our way. Roll me for this. I'm going to say persuasion. But if you have any sort of skill that might relate to the performance of proper rituals and observances that would go into making such a request, I'd let you roll that as well. I'm looking at perception or insight. I'll allow insight here. <sighs> Not good. 5 plus 6, 11. Mm, she shakes her head at you beneath her serpent's mask. I need to protect the interests of all of my guests, my dear friend, and even at the behest of the Guild Pact. I cannot simply divulge such things will I nil I. <laughs> will I nil I. Thank you for attending my humble gathering. Please enjoy the rest of the exchange. Oh, I won't, but thank you anyway. I sort of turn back around, go to Clark. It's all you, friend. What is? We gonna blow it up? I sort of give him a wink from beneath my mask. Okay. If I talk to anyone that way again, I might throw up. <laughs> uh, Andy, were you implying I should go talk to Anatevna? I was implying you could just literally blow the place up. Like, Alan does not give a shit anymore. I think this is, like, brutally challenging in ways that games are not usually done. Yeah. Alan is completely done. Yeah. Out of his depth. <laughs> Love it. Clark is going to approach Silas next. God, here we fucking go. Yeah, I'm going to approach Silas. Oh my god. Ah! Well, we were we were doing real well. <laughs> Let's watch this shit fall off a cliff. Were we? Were we, though? You were doing. You were doing. I don't think well. all of us need to do well, as long as one of us can fucking bring this shit home. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what happens here. All right. I walk up to Silas. A dragon, huh? Wow. Yes, dragons are magnificent arcane creatures. Uh, you know, most magical spells are written in draconic, and oh, yeah. the greatest practitioner of magic on our plane, I don't need to explain to you, is a dragon. I've only met one dragon, and I like them just fine. And uh, what are you, a fox? Not quite as exciting as a dragon, for sure, but... No, definitely not. Phoenix is also quite majestic. Yeah, that's why I chose it. I'll have to remember that for the next time. Anyway... I turn back to Silas. So, uh, what's your name? I'm Silas. Are you a practitioner of the arcane, by any chance? Oh, you're Silas. I've heard a lot about you. You have, have you? I have. 
I heard that, uh, you know things. Yes, I know them. Things that other people don't know. And even things that haven't happened yet. That's right. So then, what am I about to say? Ha! Oh, divination isn't quite that simple. I would need my implements. Sorry, it's not just a parlor trick I can break out. In other words, they're not that high level of a wizard yet. What kind of implements? Oh, you know, my crystals and my seeing stones. And, Mm. you know, of course, the pools, the vision pools. I see. Did you get any of that stuff here? Oh, no, most of it's in New Prov. We can't take those things out of the office. Oh. That would be, well, that would be against the rules, and we're all about the rules. Of course you are. Well, what brings you here tonight? Oh, well, I heard there might be some interesting magical curios up for auction, and I just thought I'd get a closer look. Interesting magical cure. I love in- interesting magical curios. Oh, yes. They're one of my favorite things. As you're having this conversation, you can roll Arcana for your influence check here. 14. Good. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I'm Silas, you're... You don't know my name? Oh, oh, you want me to divine it. Then I might be. They start casting a spell and crisscrossing lights and orbs and lines and various matrices of geometric shapes show up before their eyes. After a minute of looking at it, they say, You are... You are Clark, and you wanted to ask me about oh, a crime. I love solving crimes. You love solving crimes. I mean, it's my job, and, you know, if you don't do what you love, then, you know, what are you doing? Clark kind of gazes off into the middle distance for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, snaps back into the conversation. Yeah, crime. I'm actually looking for a particular magical item in particular. <laughs> Perhaps you've seen it. Perhaps you can see it. If you can give me some description of it, I could possibly use my divinations to do it. Well, it's uh, disc-like in form, shiny, and it was probably here in this very place not too long ago. That might help, that it was here not long ago. The last exchange, I think, gives me a time frame to work with, and Bit of a vague description of the item in question. You could probably narrow something down, but I need my implements. Mm. Well, you tried. <laughs> Gotta say I'm disappointed, though. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Maybe I could do something rudimentary without my influence. Oh, could you? After the party, it's something of an involved spell. You'd do that for me? Wow. I saw you come in with Illipel, and they are just such a wonderful conversationalist. Such fascinating takes on history and politics. A real stand-up individual. Yes, Illipel certainly does talk. (laughs) You've ingratiated yourselves to me. If it's to help you solve a crime, then you got me. You twisted my arm. I'm in. Well, you've been very helpful. And we'll see you after the party, I suppose. Yes, absolutely. Enjoy the auction. I intend to. Good luck to you. And good luck to you, too. Philippel, are you going to do anything else? Nope. We did the job. We're not fucking with this. Some more time passes. More objects are wheeled up onto the stage for auction. After a while, there's this large obsidian orb that's brought up. If you're standing by or near Silas as it's being auctioned, you hear them say, Something bad is about to happen. Do I hear this? Presuming you're hanging out with Silas for the duration of this party? I'm, like, around. I'm never too far away, I think, from Clark or Illipel, just kind of watching the scene still. <sighs> oh, time. I'm gonna fungal entity. Okay, and I'm going to describe the bad thing that's about to happen. If I could add some flavor to the bitch and black tux that I just completely ruined by assuming my fungal entity. <laughs> <laughs> All of these spiky growths and plate-like fungi pierce out of this really nice suit jacket, Jekyll and Hyde style. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. As this black sphere hovers above the stage. I have no idea what this object is. It's an obsidian sphere. It Okay. It's floating, so it's probably magical. And it starts glowing in spider web like cracks in a reddish, almost fiery color as the orb starts to crack and you almost hear a bubbling sound as a molten substance starts to spurt from it. People are starting to get nervous and whisper to each other, is that supposed to be happening? I don't think that's supposed to be happening. And the light starts to emanate from this orb. It grows 
hotter and brighter, and then... Everyone buck! You say this as the orb explodes in a huge burst of fire and magma. You guys are standing towards the back of this auction, but make me a reflex save anyway. Ten. Eight. Ten. Okay, all of you are knocked prone by the force of this explosion. Cool. And you hear a voice fill the room. Gentle Zool! Welcome to the last show you'll ever need to see. Give a warm welcome to Bellius and the Scorchers! And from out of this fiery explosion steps a devil holding a wicked-looking spiked chain and a couple of cruel, cackling little imps beside him as people begin to scramble in fear. Everybody roll initiative. I'm looking around the room. I'm seeing who expected this or not as I roll a 19. 17. 10. Quirk is very amused. He thinks this is just amazing. So you're all knocked down. Some people are trampling over you in order to get out. Alwyn, you're up first. All right, so like I said, I want to see who did not look surprised. Silas knew something bad was going to happen. Well. But other than that, most people seem to be frightened and definitely surprised. There doesn't appear to be anyone who was expecting this. Can I still see the arrester? Roll a perception check. 15. It's hard to in all of this chaos. Okay, then I'm just going to go ahead and get up. There's a devil and a couple of imps. Yep. Okay, I get up, I take out my gavel, I shillelagh, and I say, I've been waiting to fight all night. About time you showed up. And I'm going to go ahead and hurl an ice knife at him. Okay, uh, is that you make an attack roll or I make a save? I make an attack first. That's a 21 and then I need probably all three of them, if they're all standing next to each other, anyone within 10 feet to make a dex save. Yeah, they all came out of the portal together. Here are their dex saves. Billions. Nope, that's an 8. The two imps, one got a 20, and the other got a 13. Okay, the 20 saves, the other two don't. Devil takes 6 piercing damage, and... The two who failed take seven cold damage. Okay. They don't seem to be too bothered by this cold damage. Mm, At all? They still seem to recoil a bit, but it doesn't have the effectiveness you might have expected. Okay. And would we, citizens of Ravnica, recognize these as Rakdos or not? Yes. Almost immediately. Okay. Especially the way they made their entrance. I'm going to kind of stay back. There's still a bunch of people. I'm going to stay back by Clark and Elko. Yep. Okay, I don't have my arcane focus. Can I still cast spells that don't have a material component? Yes, if they don't have a material component, you can still cast them. Got it. So then I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to hurl a chaos bolt at this devil. Okay. It's been a while since I've done one of these without the man. It's a nat 20. Oh, hey. boy. Yes. All right. He's got to roll 11 shitty rolls in a row, and then the nat 20. That's the trick. Here we go. 48 plus 2d6. Okay. It's going to be 25. Nice. Okay. 25 thunder damage. Yeah. A cacophonous thunderclap right in the face. They hold their ears clearly distraught by this reverberating blow. 25. Well, damn. There's two ones in there. Okay. All right. I'm going to use the rest of my movement to move kind of towards them and try to find a place to hide. All right. Make me a strength save say strength? Yes. If you're moving towards them for the first round of combat, everyone else in the room is fleeing. Oh, okay. That's a that's a four. Okay. You try to push through this crowd, but you can't get any closer. My feet aren't even, like, touching the ground. They're running in the air wildly. <laughs> I suppose you could still attempt to hide in the crowd. Great. At one plus two. Okay. Man, oh man. <laughs> God, Jimmy. Big boofs. Big boofs. Well, the devil looks at you. Look, I like loud noises as much as anyone. But that wasn't very rock and roll of you. And they start coming right at you. And they're going to attack you with their chain. Uh Uh-oh. You're really setting up the scoring of this scene. Man, oh, man. A 21, I think, is going to hit. Shit. Yeah. My AC is 12. 
for this combat, by the way, since Mage Armor has a material component. Okay. Oof. You take nine points of piercing damage as the barbs of this chain wrap around you, and you are entangled by this chain. You can attempt to escape on your turn, and then it's going to hit you with its horns. Not the horns. But that is only an eight, so it will... With It kind of has to touch its toes, and it's not as limber as it needs to be to sort of bend down that low <laughs> to skewer you. Am I restrained? You are restrained. Did you roll with advantage? No, I didn't. So it rolled a three on its first roll, and then it rolled a three on its second roll. Just not a very limber devil. Does not have the flexibility it needs. One of the imps is going to cackle maniacally as it flies over. <laughs> Nice. And Clark, make me a wisdom save. Oh, man. Wow. Flat 17. And the boss got you good! It tries to make fun of you, but you shake off its vicious mockery like it was nothing. Ah, shut up. Illipel, we're over to you. All right, question. Yes. Can I see any of the items up for auction? All right. This motherfucker. There's, it's nothing that crazy. I already see looks from all of you. Like, what's he gonna? It's nothing crazy. I'm just gonna steal them all. Oh, Clix is here. I mean, some of them have been completely destroyed. Those that were up by the stage. Some of the glass cases have been shattered. Is there any that looks like it would be suitable for surveillance? And if so, is it intact? Are you talking about Algaths? That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Make me a perception check to find this thing. Okay. Let's hope the dice looks good. Okay, it does. Cool. Eighteen. Okay, you see it. It's under the arm of the person who bought it as they scramble out of the room. Cool. I am going to cast Catapult and launch that thing at the demon. Hang on a second. Do you have to be holding the object, or can it just be anything? It says throw an object. Throw an object. That isn't being worn or carried. It's being carried. Worn or carried. First sentence of the spell. Fucking Christ. All right, I guess I'll just... Less cool, do it with the remnants of the door, and I will use Catapult on that and launch the remnants of the door at the demon. Sure. It makes a deck save. Yes, it does. It got an 18 on that deck save. Okay, enjoy taking no damage, because I don't think it's half. That's not no, cool. It nimbly leaps out of the way of the door that you've hurled at it. Wonderful. I didn't say it, but I'm going to obviously use half my movement to get out of prone. I'll use the other half to... If they're super close to me, but like not in attack of opportunity radius, I'm just going to get a little bit further away for now. Okay. I can say that can be the case. You can be far enough away from Clark that it doesn't provoke an AOO to move back a bit. Another imp comes. Illipel, make a wisdom save. How does inspiration dice work again? The... DM inspiration? The one I got for the bonus game. Anytime you would roll a d20, you can roll twice and take the better. You can just give yourself advantage. Excellent. Uh, Yeah, that went from a 3 on the dice to a 15. So it is now, yep, 16. You missed it, now you're running. You missed it, now you're running. Doesn't seem to phase you. Great, I can't wait till these fucks are taken care of. Quickly dispatch them. Alwyn, you're up. Okay, I'm going to use my bonus action first. I'm going to cast Healing Spirit behind Clark. Okay. And if I can get myself in that as well, that'd be great. Yep, that's doable. And then my action, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to attack the devil. All right. Hook on someone your own size. Dirty 20. Dirty 20 hits. That's nine bludgeoning and five necrotic. Did I take healing immediately when you cast Healing Spirit? No, it's at the beginning of each of your turns. Okay. Okay. It takes that damage. Anything else from you? No. That's it. Okay. Quark. I'll go ahead and roll the healing for you. That's five. Hey. Five's good. Okay. Quark, at the start of your turn, you take six points of damage as these spikes dig into you. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm going to use my action to try to get out. Roll me a strength save. Okay, my worst one. Two. You remain trapped by these chains, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, man. Clark's, Clark's gonna fucking die in these chains. <laughs> Somebody help me. Uh, anything else from Clark? Fucking no. 
I don't think I can. Can I do anything else? Oh, I can attack with disadvantage. You used your action. Oh, I used my you action. Used you used your action. Shit. Yeah, restraint sucks. Don't suppose I have any bonus actions. I mean, you could quicken a spell. That's a great idea. I'm glad I thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to use two sorcery points. I'm going to quicken another chaos bolt, and I'm going to attack with disadvantage and miss. Here we go. That's a 15 to hit the imp that most recently taunted me. Okay, yeah, 15 will hit an imp. All right. That's going to be eight force damage. That imp is dead. Nice. Served you right. <laughs> oh, restrained clerk sounds so sad. <laughs> yeah. Oi, that's my roadie there. The devil pulls at the chain that is around you with a critical hit. I'm going to die right now. You take 10 points of piercing damage. Okay. And then I guess it's going to stab you with its horns. That's another critical hit. Clark's eyes are popping out of the sockets. This beige die is getting permanently retired. I'm in single digits, by the way. Okay. You take a single digit amount of damage, seven. That's more than I had, though. Okay. Make a constitution save. Oh, my God. Seven. You gain the poison condition. Well, that's, that's great. I'm restrained, unconscious, and poisoned. <laughs> With no wrench, damn it. <laughs> the devil looks at his handiwork, cracks his shoulders. Oh, I just needed to do some stretches first. I still got it. Yeah, you still got it. Philippel, we're over to you. Cool. The creature is asleep, attacks against it, have advantage, right? Yes. Because this worked so well the last time. Fucking Scal is rolling hot, and I don't want anything to be savable. You know, this is a large room. This isn't like the confined corner store from before. You can center the sleep in a place that it's not going to hit your other party members, and will still hit your enemies. Are there still a ton of people running out of the room, though? No. After that first round, the crowd is dispersed. There's one person who's cowering in the corner, but that's about it. Sorry, will I pop up if I take healing at the beginning of my next turn? Yes, but I will tell you, out of character, this infernal wound prevents you from regaining hit points. What shit is what, what that? The fuck? You better roll hot. <laughs> is that the poison condition, or is that additional? No, that is the special poison of the bearded devil. In addition. Causes you to be unable to regain hit points while poisoned by it. So it's the poison condition and it's... Yeah, while poisoned this way, you can't regain hit points. Wow. The feature is called beard. <laughs> I changed it to horns for this specific encounter. Clork is basically out of the combat then. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've had enough of this carnival fuck. I can target the devil thingy and the empty thingy. Yeah. All right. All right. It's 29 HP total worth of sleep ability. 29 HP total. The imp falls unconscious first, having seven hit points left, and that leaves 22. The devil falls asleep as well. And that will be enough from both of you. Ah, well done. I think you can take us through the rest of the way, my good friend. Cast Bardic Inspiration as a bonus action. Awesome. Epic. I just give a good stoic nod. That's how you put people to sleep, apparently. The right way. Not fucking your friends. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Alwyn, we're over to you. Okay. I look at Clark, I look at the devil, I look back at Clark, I look at the devil. I do the tactical math in my head, and I'm going to attack the devil. Okay. That's an 18. Hits. But I'm going to invoke the gavel and hit him with the old grave moss hit. The old gravy wavy. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's really cool. Ah, oh, why didn't I name it the Gravy Ladle? God damn it. <laughs> and I'm going to use my last second level spell slot to do this. So that's an additional 2d4. Alright, well there's two ones on those d4s. 12 necrotic and 9 bludgeoning. Please add some flourish to how you murder the shit out of this unconscious devil. Yeah, of course. Gladly. <sighs> I take the gavel, both hands... I raise it up over this devil, and I say, Actions speak louder than words. And I slam it down on his head. Now, you stave this thing's ugly, fiendish head in. It dissolves into a pile of ash on the floor before you. Clark, make me a death saving throw. Is he still poisoned? At the end of each of their turns, they may repeat this con save. Oh, it doesn't go away even if the devil is... 
killed? No. It's poison for a minute. Anyway, that death save was a pass. That was a 14. Okay. And make me a con save. A con save. <laughs> the con save is a 23. You feel like you could regain hit points now for what it's worth. I stir slightly in my unconscious state. Is there still a shithead flying around? No, the shithead is asleep. Oh. Yeah, he's asleep. He's asleep. And we're going to try and catch him. Okay, I take out my Pokeball. <laughs> <laughs> I look back at Illipel. Maybe this one will be more susceptible to your words. It does speak common, right? I mean, it was taunting us. Yes, it speaks common. All right. You want me to, like, fucking bag this thing up? Yeah, if we're still in initiative, I can, like, tie him up with Entangle and Thorn Whip and stuff. I'm going to say we can get out of initiative. Clark is going to get hit points yeah. back from your healing spirit before he has to roll his death save, so the initiative order doesn't really matter. Does the imp get a save on their turn? No, sleep has no save. They just fall asleep. Oh, that's right. Sleep has no save. You'd think I would remember that. Sleep is an insane spell. It's so dumb. <laughs> you want to roll healing spirit? Sure. Five. Excellent. What happened? Did I kill him? You got him. I know I did. Yes, you did very well. As this fucking smashed in ooze head. <laughs> I sort of hide the fucking demon icker, devil icker from my <laughs> gavel. Clark's not going to say it out loud. Alwyn's a good friend. Uh, Alwyn's a good friend. I'm going to go ahead and do whatever I have to to tie up this imp. Okay, you do so. The sort of patron in the corner who was huddled up crying begins to walk towards you. They're wearing like a bat mask. Is, is everything safe? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Such brave heroes. Did we notice this person at all during the party? They were sort of wandering around. You would have noticed them as you were sort of keeping an eye on things generally. Okay, but it's not like a... like a Essential NPC. What am I thinking of where it's like a faint, where it's like this is actually the bad guy or something? Red herring. I don't know. Roll insight. Right. I'm, I will. It's 23. Okay, that doesn't beat their 30 deception as they approach you. Well, I mean, you told me that they rolled a 30 deception, so now I know they're being deceitful. <laughs> oh, I thought you were joking. I don't know. Am I? Or have I rolled a 30 deception? Oh. Oh, my God. They approach you. Oh, oh, thank you, heroes. How very noble of you to stand up and defend us from those horrible, horrible demons. Why didn't you run away? Like everyone else. Oh, I just got overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. It was over very fast. You're so strong. We are pretty strong. Is that... Is that one of them? Uh, and you said human looking? Yeah, human. I don't recognize you from the party. We must not have met. What's your name, friend? Oh, I'm Korzok. Mm. <laughs> just uh, here at the auction. Are you nervous? Wouldn't you be nervous? Look what just happened. Well, as you said... We've saved the day. Nothing to be nervous about now. Yeah. But there's still one of those... you still got one of those devils there. It's not... Aye, we do. It's not gonna cause any trouble, is it? Can I see it? Why would you want to do that? Awfully dangerous devils. Wouldn't want to get too close. <laughs> it's asleep now. It should be safe, right? Well, you never know those sleep spells. How they work, really. Could wake up at any moment. Roll something. Whatever you're trying to do. Sure. I'm going to reroll my fucking insight check. <laughs> sure, go ahead. That's a 21. Okay. Korzok just seems morbidly curious to take a look at this imp. And you said what kind of mask did they have? A bat mask. Mm. Well, we're not quite done here, friend Korzok. Bit of due diligence on this imp before we're going to be done with him. And I want to turn around as if I, as if, you know, I'm, I'm going to... Go up to this imp. I'm going to approach it, and um, whether Korzok follows or not, I'm going to cast as a spell, not as a ritual, detect magic. Do I get anything on Korzok? No. They don't appear magical or have any magical auras around them. Mm, fascinating. Mm. I just sort of whisper in Illipel's ear, I don't know if your silver tongue will get anything, but I get a bad feeling about a new friend here. Where did this person fucking come from? Was it the person cowering in the corner? Cowering in the corner. That's the thing. It was the person cowering in the corner, and now they're like, hey, let me look at that imp, because I'm going to kill him before you can ask him questions. Yeah. Just casually an NPC with a name that was predetermined. Yeah, right? <laughs> We're on to your shit, Scala. Korzak, was it? I understand if you are shaken. It is quite an eventful evening, to be sure. However... 
As a gesture of gratitude, I think we would certainly appreciate it if you just gave us the space to conduct our business. We did, after all, fell these demons and wrest the night back into the control of the patrons of this party. Would you be so kind as to let us be for now, and we will join you outside shortly? As Illipel is talking to them, I just have the imp under my arm asleep. I'm going to go look for Tomic. Okay. He ran out with the rest of everybody. You head outside the main ballroom into the twisting corridors of the mausoleum, although many of them are cordoned off with velvet ropes and things of that nature. You find your way back to the surface where most of the patrons seem to have gathered outside, and that's where you would find Tomic. Do we also find the arrester? Actually, yes. You actually bump into him, into the hall. He's coming back your way. Sure. Oh, late to the fun. So it would seem, though, judging from that creature under your arm, you seem to have things well in hand. As I told you we would, where were you when the fight broke out? Ensuring the safety of civilians. Mm, aye, noble of you. I do my part, and it seems that you have done yours. Perhaps my initial evaluation of you was incorrect. More data is still required. I hold up this sleeping imp. I'm not trying to wake it up. I'm trying to be somewhat careful of that. Ah, you've apprehended a suspect for me to take into custody. Very good. Thank you, citizen. Well, we're going to have some questions for him first, and then I will turn him over to you. Do you recognize where this one might have come from? From the dungeon palace, most like. Hmm. Aye. Like I said, you're welcome to him, but we've got our questions first. That is not for you to decide. I think it is. We fought him. We beat him. You're welcome to him in a moment. Roll persuasion. This is just a flat roll. Yeah. Fourteen. I'll use the bardic on this. Plus six, dirty twenty. Okay. Do you object to my presence at whatever questioning you have planned? Not at all. Perhaps you could help us. Very well. You may ask your questions, but then you will remand the suspect into my custody. As you say. Come, let us find a less public place to conduct this business. Is that guy still following us? Are you all sort of in this hallway? I kind of wanted to go out while Illipel was still talking to them. Okay. They would have stayed and talked with Illipel. I want to go find Silas. That's where I was getting at. Yeah, that's important. Okay. I uh, wonder if Silas is still around here somewhere. That's a great thought. Might be worthwhile to bring him back to us. It's a great idea. Glad I thought of it. Yep. <laughs> Fucking pork. I love this as a catchphrase for Clark. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's so good. Glad I thought of it. <laughs> In this case, I did literally think. <laughs> yeah, you actually did this time. But. Um, all right, I go outside. I look around. Okay. Yeah, you can find Silas easily enough. Oh, person wearing a dragon mask. Hey, Silas, my partner in crime. Oh no, I would, I would. Or my partner against crime. Yeah, partner against crime. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I would never partner with someone in crime. Anyhow, I'm glad you got out safe. Rester Jowan was going back in to make sure those devils were taken care of. Oh, they're taken care of. We got nothing to worry about there. Oh, well, Chief Rester Jowan is very good at his job, so <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Sure, sure he is. But why don't you come back inside with us? Oh, you sure it's safe? Oh, I'm sure. Okay. I made sure it's safe. I took care of the devil. You did? I guess you do look pretty beat up. That must have been quite a fight. Those clown carnival freaks always causing trouble, stirring up chaos. Oh, it's no good. No good. No good at all. I mean, you did your part in there. Gave us a little heads up. Much appreciated. You know, I had my doubts about you, but <laughs> I think that you're the real deal. Now, why don't you come inside and tell me what you were going to tell me? Uh, okay, sure. Let's go. So... The arrestor and I go back into the room okay. where Illipel and Korzak are. Say, the party was so formal I never got your name. I suppose your brave actions have earned you that much. I am Jalen. Mm, Jalen. Jalen, have you met Korzak? He's another of our new friends. I did see him at the event this evening. You should go outside with the others, Korzak, and wait until I have pronounced this crime scene... Sufficiently well investigated. Korzak looks at this. Oh, well, that's kind of a bummer. I really thought this party was going to be fun. But now that you're here, it just stinks. Let's all roll initiative. Yeah, I fucking thought so. 19. 22. 17. Clark, you're up first with a 22. Am I in the room? 
I would say so, yeah. We abstracted time. You can be in the room while this is happening. Okay, yeah. You go before Korzak does. He says this party stinks, and you think that something might happen. You see him going for a gun. He's got a gun. (laughs) (laughs) Are we all pretty much in close quarters here? You can be. Okay, yeah. I'm going to shock and grasp him. Okay. Clerk shot first. Hell yeah, good ass reference. 19. 19 hits. What did you say, Jeppy? Clerk shot first. Han shot first. Yeah. You're about as cool as Han. Thank you. Definitely as rude. Oh, really? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) All right, that's six lightning damage as I grab his arm. Ah! You know, I like a good prank buzzer as much as anyone else, but... You need a setup before the punchline. Like I said, this party stinks. As he says that, this noxious gas starts to pour out from beneath his sleeves and fills an area around him. Can everyone make me a con save, please? Wow, he got fucking 20. Wow, he got a damn good initiative roll. 24. 14. 18. Clark and Illipel, you can act as normal, but Alwyn, you spend your next turn retching motherfucker and reeling as this stinking cloud envelops the area and now it's illipel's turn i thought i got a lower roll than alwyn yeah i'm retching (coughs) don't let him (coughs) get away yeah alwyn's retching oh right you can't handle it that's ironic i know right spend most of your life in a stinking cloud (laughs) (laughs) all right i guess i'll just say joke all you want but you are outnumbered and we will overtake you and learn what you're here for. I'll cast Dissonant Whispers. Please make me a wisdom save. That's in that one. Good. 14 psychic damage. Yeah, he takes that. He would use his reaction to flee from you, but because he's been shocking grasped, he can't take reactions. Also, Korzak needs to maintain concentration on the stinking cloud from the dissonant whispers. Stinking cloud dissipates. Now Jalen, Jalen is going to attempt to imprison Korzak inside an Azor's resilient sphere. Hell yeah. So Korzak is going to make a dex save. Korzak is going to roll a 12, which does not beat Jalen's spell save DC, and he is trapped inside a little bubble. Clark, we're back to you. I look at Silas. Anything you wanted to do there? Or uh, <laughs> maybe a witty quip? Or... <laughs> Clark is fucking on it. Silas says, Ah, yes, that's a classic arrestor technique. Azor's resilient sphere, obviously developed by Supreme Judge Azor the First. The founder of the Azorius Senate. Fantastic spell. Fantastic for capturing criminals and protecting the innocent from harm. Very utile. I guess that wasn't a witty quip, but, you know, I'm a font of information. Information's good. Every little bit helps. I mean, this situation seems pretty safe now. Yep. Or should I continue attacking the man in the bubble? I mean, the bubble protects them from harm. Right. I kind of glazed over while Silas was talking. (laughs) I don't have anything to do on my turn, then. Okay. So you hold your action in case Korzak breaks out. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. My fingers spark with another shocking grasp, just in case I need to zap him. Okay. It goes back to Korzak's turn. Motherfucker. That's a good-ass spell. Resilient Sphere? Yeah. He's going to attempt to dispel it. Yeah, no. He's going to attempt to dispel it and fail? I guess that's the end of the combat. Got him. <laughs> kind of was like Pokemon. <laughs> I just look to our friend, the arrester, and say, Well, look at that. Got another one. That we have. But this one I will be taking into my custody. I sort of tap my finger on the sphere and I say, Kozak, were you going to kill this simp? <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe later, but I was thinking we could just make a quick getaway first. Yeah, all right. Now I'm stuck in a ball. Some evening this has been. I look back to Jalen and say, Well, I hope you'll stick around. And I will look to Illipel to wake up the imp. Okay, you wake up the imp. First, I'll turn to Silas and say, We appreciate your patience while we sort out this rabble. In the meantime, how long would it take you to surmise the information we requested? Oh, well, I can set that up in a few minutes. Will you have your little interrogation and... I will prepare for my precognition, and I'll have an answer for you. 
I think. I think you will. I have nothing but faith in your abilities. Silas and you guys solving crimes together. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, a knack for musicality. Thank you again. Okay, I'm going to go do some peering into the future. You guys have fun doing whatever it is you're doing. Okay. They sort of walk off into another corner of the room. And just stand over this imp, looking intimidating, waiting for Illipel to work their magic. I'll start simple. Would you mind explaining what you and your devil master were doing here this evening? Before you begin, no riddles. What do I look like? The Riddler? Cannon. Well, you're not off to a great start. We were here to put on a great show. Lots of screaming and fleeing in terror. Ooh, fantastic performance art. To what end does a troop such as yourself put together such a rousing show for an audience that wants nothing to do with it? The role of the artist in society, as outlined by our guild charter, is to speak truth to power. The truth is, we don't like that y'all have power. <laughs> <laughs> the player digs it, but Illipel. <laughs> While I do appreciate the power of good wordplay, I'm afraid that power is not rested by words alone. Seems as though you were prepared to take some action, but I as of yet do not quite understand it. This merely doesn't seem like the behavior of some guild charter, but something deeper. Enough riddles. Why? Nah, nothing deeper. Bunch of snooty snoot snoots are gonna be here, and we're gonna ruin their night. Real simple. We would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you meddling adults. Can I roll insight? I rolled a 19. Okay. They seem genuine. I sort of channel my best fucking Batman Begins. Who hired you? No. Who hired you? Hired? Hired? Nobody hired us. We just wanted to do this. Who told you that this meeting would be happening here? No. People talk. I. They do. We have information waiting for us. Illipel gestures to Silas. I think this puny, meaningless creature can be on its way to the arrester here. Alwyn, are you satisfied? I am. Oh, no. I don't want to go back and lock up. Jelen, they're all yours. Thank you. It is not often that citizens take it upon themselves to reduce the great deal of chaos that pervades our lives. You ought to be commended. Good evening. Reducing chaos? Never been accused of that before. <laughs> Love it. Beautiful. Nice. Well, like you might have heard me when I was screaming as I smashed the devil's head in. Actions speak louder than words. I hope you'll remember that. He gives you a respectful nod, and then he departs with his two prisoners. I appreciate your patience, Silas. Thank you. Oh, no, don't worry about it. It's all good. It's all okay. I have seen it. You are seeking a broker. Yes. Who bought an object from this exchange. And their name is Brevislav. Whoa. Brevislav. The wonders of divination. Well, I have no doubt that you'd be able to divine even more with more time. Was there anything else you gleaned? A location? Characteristics? Appearance? Goals? I see it. The future. You will descend into Brevislav's vault. And there you will discover more. But what you discover is yet unclear. So you just know that we're going to do that? Yes, unless I've made a grave error. And I don't usually. I have a good record. I'm becoming too predictable. <laughs> it's a big city. Do you know where the vault is? I don't know for sure. But if they're an Orzhov broker who has a vault, I mean, you would probably know where it is. Illipel, you would presume it's somewhere beneath the bank of Viscopa where secure objects are held. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was like a private little vault, you know, like a like a large safe in their house or something like that. You don't know for sure, but that would be your guess. Sure. Something we could probably ask Tomek. Silas, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. This was lots of fun. I don't suppose you could um, put a good word in for me over at the Guild Pact. I mean, I love my job for the Senate. It's very rewarding, but, you know, there's a lot of prestige that comes with proximity to the center of it all. Although, no, I think... I think I'll... Never mind. Ignore what I just said. Well, uh, uh, are you certain? I'm happy to put in a good word for you, but I would say that to succeed in the Guild Pact, one needs to speak with more brevity. Fewer words is key. 
you didn't strike me as that type of person at all. That's kind of why we got along. <laughs> the ability to modulate both your tone of voice and number of words is also key. Oh. oh. They sort of slump a little. But I've made a tremendous friend in you, Silas, and whether you decide to stay where you are or come along to the Guild Pact, there is a tavern waiting for you in Precinct 2 called the Violet Rose. A free drink and plentiful conversation wait you. Oh, that sounds lovely. Uh, thank you, Illipel. I'll just, uh, oof, this has been a very stimulating evening, but I think this is probably a good place to end this conversation. I keep Croxting talking. Bye! <laughs> and they sort of wander away, anxious, anxious little dweeb that they are. Little hurried steps. <laughs> yep. Cool. Well, it seems as though we have our next destination, and vaults tend to not move too much. We'll say you all to a night of rest, and we get back to it in the morning. Ah, I'm tired. Well, Cloak, it's as you said. I'm never going back to that place again. Let's get out of here. Gladly. Okay, as you're heading out, people are gradually beginning to file back in. Tomic runs into you. Ah, I must say, you seem to have made quite an impression with your heroics tonight. That happens everywhere we go. This is why we have confidence in you, I think. But you're leaving. That makes me believe that you have found some actionable information. Indeed we have. Hard to say for certain how quickly it will yield results, but at first light tomorrow we expect to make some headway. Do you care to perhaps share with me? I'd like to roll insight. Okay. Can I back them up? Can I give them the help action? Yeah, you can give the help action. Sure. All right, cool. Didn't help a lot. Got an 11. With advantage? Yeah, first one was a three. Tomic thinks maybe he might be able to help you in the next stage of your investigation. If it was bought here, might be by someone he knows. Okay. Tomic hasn't been one to ask for updates. It struck me as a little odd, but I, I get that angle. Go ahead and tell him what we learned, Illipel. I'm going home. Good night, Mr. Clark. It takes a dedicated, strong arm of management to know when not to manage. Anyway, we realize we are looking for a broker by the name of Brevislav. Apparently, he's the proud owner of a vault. My suspicion is this vault may lie underneath the scope. Your suspicion is correct. Uh, yes, Brevislav's is one of the many of the vaults of Viscopa. I could arrange, perhaps, to get you into the vaults proper to visit my own personal vault, but after that, you could perhaps make your way to Brevislav's. Sort of a Gringotts situation. I do not know what this means. <laughs> <laughs> but our goblins aren't offensive stereotypes. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. There's a variety. They just have, uh, you know, really, really lovable... Accents. None of the Italians involved in this podcast have any problem with what's going on here, yeah. all right? So, <laughs> so can it, all right? Sempre buono. Sempre buono. Three out of four members of this podcast are Italian. Oh, yeah, like heavily. <laughs> yeah. Three of us' last name ends the with most a vowel. most Italian. And one of us is only vowel last names. <laughs> I think we've learned the ways of exploring spaces and could... Stumble our way into Breveslav's vault with a proper introduction. Tomek, that would be most appreciated. Should we meet you tomorrow morning? Where would you prefer? You can come to my office at Viscopa Financial Services in the Bank of Viscopa. We can go from there. I am released from my formal obligations at four in the evening. Any time thereafter, we can make our little journey into the vaults. Looking forward to it. Ah, as am I. I have found your company to never be lacking in excitement. I still have some personal business to attend with my colleagues here, but I am sure you wish to be getting on to other things. I could sense that you are somewhat out of your element at this event, but you still performed quite admirably. We made you as we all want to. Well, good night to you. I will see you tomorrow. Perfection. And he walks back into the ballroom. Alwyn. Yes? If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to have an important conversation with you tomorrow. Would you care to stay free of charge at the Violet Rose? Perhaps share a quick drink and conversation in the early afternoon before we make our way to Viscopa. Is this about your former partner? Yes, but really it's about everything. All right, but I don't want any perfume in my room. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me. 
with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.